Imagine you're visiting London for the first time. You bring up maps on your phone, but the signal is bad. Two million feet west. The road forks and you set off down the wrong street. And instead of visiting Big Ben, you end up visiting Big Jen, who works in the chippy. Like a map, DJs use grids, metadata, and cue points to navigate their tracks. But if that map is even a little wrong, it can lead to bad transitions, train wrecks, and broken dreams. In this video, I'll show you the best settings to get accurate track analysis first time every time, how to get your grids tight faster, and the big risks you need to avoid that tripped me up on CDJs. Drag your files in, sit back, relax, as Recordbox analyzes your files and puts on a perfect grid. It's the easiest part of the process, right? But it's also the first thing you can get wrong, causing a cascade of problems that affect everything from setting cues to creating playlists. Three of the most common analysis problems are that the BPM is half or double what it should be, it's not a round number, or it's basically made up. If you mix particularly high BPM music like drum and bass, sometimes Recordbox can get really confused. It used to analyze a lot of my tracks at 87 BPM, half of what it should be. This made me have to do actual maths during sets, which was unacceptable. To fix this, you need to help Recordbox understand what kind of music it's looking at by setting a BPM range. Go into settings via the cog, click analysis, then under BPM range, choose a range that most accurately represents most of the music you'll be analyzing. Because I'm doing drum bass, I lifted mine up to 98 to 195. Close preferences, you'll now need to re-analyze your tracks. Select the tracks Recordbox has got wrong, right click and do Analyze Tracks. You'll see it's now pulled in the new BPM range here. Click OK. The BPMs are now correct. Sometimes Recordbox just gets it a bit wrong and needs some help. This is pretty easy to spot when you see Recordbox has got the right BPM but it's put a tiny little decimal point after it. On this track, Recordbox has got the BPM slightly wrong. You'll see the grid starts out okay, but it drifts further and further away from the beat. By the end of the track, it's nowhere near. This is pretty easy to fix. Click on the grid edit icon here on the left and just get rid of the decimal point by double clicking. Have a quick check of the grid and you'll see everything is now lined up. If you prefer, you can also fix this in export mode. To do that, change to export mode at the top left here. Go into grid on the left and do the same thing. This is Gary Grout. He's a roofer. He uses a ladder to get to people's roofs. He bought his ladder from Recordbox. On his first job of the day, Gary climbs halfway up his ladder. He wipes a little sweat from his brow and then takes the next step. But the step is glued on in the wrong place. He slips and ends up going to A&E where he spends the next 43 years waiting to be seen. Let's flip this waveform on its side. Think of the grid like the steps on the ladder. Grids are the foundation of everything in your DJ software. They show us where the beat is, keep the effects in time, and help us set loops and use other performance features. The problem is, Recordbox isn't very good at making ladders. It gets the amount of steps right, but glues them on in the wrong place. We need to fix this or our sets can fall apart. In this example, Recordbox has got the BPM right, but it's messed up the downbeat on the grid. The drop is here on this cue point, but the downbeat marker is one beat out. If we look at the beginning of the track, we can see Recordbox has incorrectly guessed where the start of the track actually is. I found this is pretty common when the tune has some sort of instrumental intro or is literally any genre other than house. The long way to fix this is to line up your downbeat on the center of the grid, go into grid edit mode and click the marker here. This sets the downbeat where your playhead is. I have a much faster way though. Find your downbeat, center it on the playhead, then just press option three. In export mode, it's a bit more complicated because that keyboard shortcut doesn't exist. You have to press Command and G to enter grid mode, then Command and backslash to set the downbeat. To make things spicy, sometimes producers have sections of the track which are faster or slower than the rest of the tune. Older tracks or those with a human drummer can often have varied BPMs. Recordbox standard analysis mode assumes the same BPM throughout the track, so it tends to have a bit of a heart attack when it comes across this kind of tune. This track here by Dad Life has a portion before the second drop where the track slows right down. You can see for most of the track Recordbox has got the grid pretty spot on. But as soon as we get to about here where the track starts slowing, the grid loses all sense of reality. It's not lined up with the beats at all. When we get to the second drop where the BPM normalizes, the grid is locked back on. So how can we stop this happening? For this kind of track, we need to use a different analysis mode called Dynamic. This allows Recordbox to recognize when the BPM has changed within the same track. 
It will then do its best to adjust the grid accordingly on the slower and faster sections. To set this, go into Preferences, Analysis, and change Track Analysis Mode to Dynamic. You'll then need to reanalyze the track. This will shift things about a bit, so you need to set the downbeat again. I'll do that with the keyboard shortcut Option and Free. Let's have a look where the track starts slowing down. The grid markers are now a lot more aligned with the actual beats. One thing to bear in mind though is that the downbeats may not necessarily line up with the downbeats on this slower portion of the track but the actual grid itself is right. These tracks are normally the exception rather than the rules, so remember to change your analysis mode back to normal after you've dealt with it. Rekordbox gives you massive flexibility with how you prepare your tracks, but it can also set you up for disaster if you don't understand how club gear works. If you're a controller DJ, you may never have heard of memory cues. They're an ancient technology which acts like bookmarks on a track. You can of course use hot cues in the same way, so you might be wondering why you should care. I was curious how many really old CDJs were still being used in the wild. I ran a poll and there's still a lot of old gear out there. The CDJ900 is from 2009, which was three years before 2012, which is 11 years before today. This matters because anything before a CDJ2000 Nexus 2 had a maximum of three hot cues, and for the really old CDJs, none at all. That means memory cues are the only option. As someone that relied solely on hot cues, this meant my library was not prepared for club gear. This is easiest to resolve in export mode, which you'll be using anyway if you're preparing your music for CDJs. A minimum, I always use my third hot cue to set the drop. This gives me some flexibility to set some more leading up to it. In export mode, you can do that just by pressing the number three. If I also want to set a memory cue here, I can just press M. If you want to do the same thing in performance mode, there's a weirder shortcut. Shift and T for the first deck, or Shift and P for the second deck. You can customise this to something less stupid by going to Settings, Keyboard, Deck 1, then find Set Memory Cue. Click on the existing shortcut, click Change, and then press your desired key. I've not had massive success with this next trick, but give it a go. Go into Preferences, Analysis, and choose Set Memory Cue at the first beat of track. Right click and analyze the track again. Next time you analyze a track, Rekordbox will attempt to add a memory cue on the first beat it detects. That's the theory anyway. Unless you're using a CDJ3000, the screen on most CDJs is pretty small, at least compared to a laptop. Because of this, many DJs like to hijack the artist or title field to include some additional information. That way they can understand more about a track at a glance. You can't do batch processing in Rekordbox, so you'll need to use a third party tool. Mixed in key is one option that will automatically re-tag tracks for you based on the track metadata. Data. This video isn't sponsored, but Mixed in Key hooked me up with a license so I could give it a try. One of the most common options is to write the key and energy level at the start of the track title tag. Next time you analyze the track, Mixed in Key will change the title field of the track to add the key and energy. Other popular tools for doing this are MP3 tag and Lexicon. These all cost money, but you can't really put a price on being prepared. Except, I guess they did. But everything I've just told you is a complete waste of your time. Because if your library isn't easy to read, you'll never find any of these tracks again. That's why you should watch this video next where I show you how to make browsing your library lightning fast.